Dick, yes. thank you so much for being with us and being part of our Speaking Truth to Youth project. I really appreciate your time. I just have a few questions I'd love to ask you. And the first one is what events or beliefs in your youth caused you to be an activism or such an ethical human? Our parents my, my, that raised my sister and myself with a, with a very strong sense of what was right and what was wrong. And with the complete expectation that we would always do what was right. And when we didn't do what was right, we suffered the consequences. There was accountability. And and let me give you a a very brief story on that. When I was very, this is probably four or five years old, both my parents smoked. And um, I used to love to play with matches. Now, don't get me wrong. I, you know, I, I would just you know, sneak some matches off. I knew I wasn't supposed to, but I would sneak off and I would, you know, strike a match. It was just fascinating. And I would strike another one and so forth. One afternoon, my father was gone and uh, my I, mom said, just, you know, go play. And so I went out in the back and there were a couple of fields back there. And I just found a little area and I started playing with the matches again. And all of a sudden, I didn't mean to do this, but you know, inadvertently, a little stray strand of dry grass caught on fire, and then it caught the grass around me. And all of a sudden, this whole field was burning. And I was traumatized by that. And so I I didn't go home. I didn't tell my mom. I ran over to a friend's house, three houses down, and we used to play together. And I, I told him what I had done. And in the meantime, we watched the you know neighbor call the fire truck and so forth. And they put out the fire. His mother, he told his mother, and his mother called my mother. Oh, my gosh. She marched down to that house. She grabbed me. She took me home. And I'll tell you what, I've been spanked a number of times. They were not shy with that. But I I was punished. I was spanked. And it was for two reasons. One, I shouldn't have been playing with matches. I knew that harm could come whenever you don't do something right. Somebody can be hurt. Plus, I wasn't honest. When it happened, even though I didn't deliberately mean to do it, I ran away from it. I didn't. I didn't come tell my mother. There were several lessons that I took away from this. One, you always do what is right, because when you don't do what is right, somebody can be hurt. And you may not know it at the time, but inevitably, someone can be hurt by those actions. And it was, it was wrong. And I knew I wasn't supposed to. I did it anyway. And that was for selfish reasons. I would later learn the term selfish and what that meant. So the important thing that stayed with me throughout is always do what is right. Don't do harm because harm will happen when you don't do things that are right. Again, from an early age, sort of had that instilled in me. I'm concerned that now, especially for young people, there are so many models that are that don't do yeah. what is right. Do you have thoughts on that? And that is a concern in, in today's world. Morals and ethics and what is right and wrong, the sense of what is right and wrong is typically instilled at a very early age. I do worry about that because you, you look at what is going on in our country and it's very concerning. And it's because people don't have that sense of what is right and what is wrong and what is selfish and what will not do uh, you know, harm to others. I'm very deeply concerned about that. And I, I do a lot of public speaking on, on ethical decision making because, quite frankly, I'm convinced a lot of our troubles that we're experiencing in today's environment are due to the fact that people are don't know how to make ethical decisions. They've never been exposed to that before. But again, it, it gets back to being able to, one, you have to be true to yourself. And obviously, and, and, and two, you've got to be conscious of what actions can be taken that will impact others just besides yourself? What 
does continue to kind of motivate you to be an activist or what guides you, what gives you courage in these times? Again, I'm very concerned about what is going on in our country. I have seen firsthand that there can be tremendous damage done to the economy, done to individuals with um, unethical decision-making. And that's what keeps me going. I've got six grandkids and I want them to grow up in a country. You could, you've, we've all, everyone has to leave this place a little bit better off than we found it. I believe that. I, that's been instilled in me growing up. And that's what I attempt to do when I talk to my audiences, that uh, it's important that everyone keep that in mind. And you took a big stand at personal risk and mm. suffered the consequences. So what gave you the courage to do that? It was right. And I knew that people were going to be harmed. And as it turns out, Many, many, many were. I mean, pension funds lost billions and billions of dollars because of some decisions that were made that were basically selfish decisions, back to that term being selfish. So this is what you know it gives me the courage to go forward is that we've again, you know, I'm not going to be on this earth that much longer. But again, when I leave this place, it's got to be a little better than I found it. And that's what I'm trying to do. So what advice do you have for young activists? Be true to yourself. Don't do harm to others. Think through the decisions that um, you are making and assess what the impact of those decisions are. And also, I, I don't take this lightly, don't allow yourself to become involved in unethical situations, because then all of a sudden you are contributing to the circumstances that are wrong to begin with. So it's okay. I, I tell my student, it's okay to raise your hand when you see something going on that you know you're concerned about. And this is okay because it, it gives, in my instance, a, you know, a company or the organization a chance to give you feedback, to have a dialogue with you. And, and quite frankly, you know, they might take a look at what you're bringing up and, and they might agree with you and they might fix it. That's the way it's supposed to work. But I also tell them that if you raise your hand, ask a question, then that's fine. And you get the feeling, maybe I shouldn't have asked that. Or maybe, maybe you're told, why don't you just shut up and go back to work? I tell them to stop and think before they go forward, because there can be consequences. Perhaps the way to address this is not the confrontational side you initially thought about. That doesn't mean that you give up on it. But if you do decide that you can't change things where you are in your position, then get out of there. Don't allow yourself to become involved in it. Thank you so much, Dick. I really appreciated this conversation. 